And a very pleasant good afternoon, everyone. Welcome into O'Neill's Grill here in Harrisonburg for our weekly fan and press luncheon. As we continue with the college football season and work our way through the college basketball season as well. I'm Kurt Dudley from JMU Athletics. I want to welcome those that are watching on Facebook Live here this afternoon, also listening in on the daily sports feed on ESPN 1360 WHBG as we have the host Dave Thomas with us here as well. Here's today's lineup. We will have head coach Mike Houston of the JMU Football Dukes along with us once again talking about this Saturday's game against Stony Brook. I'll have a few more details on that in just a moment. Lou Rowe, head coach of the JMU Men's Basketball Dukes, also joins us today. Dukes went 1-1 one one last week. And Sean O'Regan and the Women's Basketball Dukes, also 1-1 one one last week. He will be here to wrap things up this afternoon. Before we do uh, have the coaches come in, uh, a couple of other sports notes. Volleyball Dukes were here on Sunday night at O'Neill's Grill to learn of who and where they will play in the opening round of the NCAA Volleyball Tournament that begins on Friday. And the Dukes, uh, well, they jumped out of their seats here. As they learn, they will go to the same place that the softball Dukes played in the regionals last May, and that is to Waco, Texas, home of the Baylor Bears. Madison is matched up against the Buffaloes of Colorado, a team which went 22-9 and nine, and is one of nine teams from the Pac-12 that is in the 64-team field. So the Pac-12 is a pretty good volleyball conference, as you well know. The Dukes going in with a record of 23-5, and five, and this is the first meeting between Buffalo and James Madison. That game is 5.30 on Friday, and the winner of that contest on Saturday meets the winner between 12-seeded Baylor and the Miami of Ohio squad that won the MAC and goes into that tournament. Again, that's 5.30 on Friday. Moving on to football, the Dukes do host Stony Brook at 2 o'clock Saturday at Bridgeport Stadium. Tickets do range from $15 for general admission to $135 for club level. Of course, for club level, you have to have the minimum Duke Club donation in. Uh, JMU students are admitted free, but they still have to register online to get their tickets. Stony Brook, a member of the Colonial Athletic Association, like JMU, but it is one of those teams the Dukes did not face during the regular season. Uh, they earned an at-large bid going 9-2. and two. Their losses were to Delaware. That was a home loss to the Blue Hens about midseason. Their other loss was early in the year, 31-17 to 17 to South Florida, when the Bulls were nationally ranked just inside the top 20. And uh, by the way, South Florida came a win away from making the championship game of the American Athletic Conference, but did lose to unbeaten Central Florida this past week. So the uh, the uh, Stony Brook Seawolves finished 9-2 and two during the regular year, but they'll come to town 10-2, and two, beating Lehigh of the Patriot League 59-29 to 29 in the opening round this past Saturday. The winner of the JMU-Stony Brook game gets a team from Utah. It could be Weber State or it could be Southern Utah. If JMU wins, the Dukes would be at home the next weekend, but the date, whether it be Friday or Saturday, and the time will not be known until the weekend. Coverage of the game this weekend from Bridgeport Stadium, certainly on the JMU Sprint Broadcast Network. Dave Thomas and Clint Estes will have the call on News Radio 5 or Talk Radio 550 AM. You can also hear that on Matazone Free Audio. Uh, the other coverage is ESPN3. All of the second round games are covered by ESPN3, so you can keep up with everything going on there. Again, the, uh, the broadcast for the radio network begins at 1, and the, the television or video coverage begins at 2 o'clock. Gates will open an hour before the ball game. So let's bring in the head coach of the top-ranked, undefeated, reigning CA champs, reigning national champs, Dukes of James Madison, Mike Houston. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot and good to be back uh, this week at O'Neill's and thanks to Tim and uh, Mo and our enthusiastic audience uh, for being here today. So, uh, an exciting time of the year. So, uh, as we enter December, and you know, anytime you're playing football in December, uh, that means you've had a special year because there's only a few teams left playing in the country. I don't care what level you're talking about. So, uh, we're excited uh, to be in the national playoffs, and we're excited, uh, you know, to have a second round game at home in Bridgeforth Stadium this week against a very good Stony Brook team. Uh, and you know, it's been a you know, it's been a good time to take a break last week 
uh, with the bye week. You know, we were able to practice three days, uh, also able to give the, the players some time off and the coaches some time off to, to be with family and uh, rest up and recuperate and, you know, not only physically rest up but mentally uh, kind of rest up a little bit. And I uh, got back at it Sunday with a, a very energetic practice and the players are very motivated for this week. They're motivated for, uh, you know, what is a very, very good Stony Brook team uh, to come in here Saturday. And we expect it to be a, you know, a, a, a good football game, a very challenging football game. Stony Brook, 8-2 uh, and two on the year with a, uh, a hard-fought loss. Uh, very close game to a very talented South Florida team. Uh, and then a very close loss to Delaware, uh, who we know is a, a, a top CAA football team. Uh, you know, the only two blemishes on their record. So, uh, and I think they're playing their best ball of the year right now. Uh, they're very, you know, big aggressive, active, athletic defense. Uh, offensively, a huge offensive line, three running backs that got all three start in this league. Uh, I know that, uh, you know, Bolden may be out this week at uh, wide receiver, but, you know, it's almost like they have clones coming in right behind them, you know, whether it's Washington or Anderson or Jackson. You know, all three of them are, are you know, big playmakers, as we saw last week with uh, Jackson having the 76-yarder against Lehigh. So, uh, you know, I think it's – it's going to be a great football game. So uh, it's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be a, 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 a typical postseason football game. Two, two uh, you know, top-notch defenses, two teams that are going to be very physical trying to run the football. Uh, I would imagine it's going to be a very close football game uh, and one that will come down to, you know, the same things that game, all games this time of the year come down to. And that's, you know, being able to run the ball, stop the run, turnovers, field position. You know, those are going to be the big keys to the game on Saturday. So. Uh, you know, I'm excited uh, to get back out there at 2 o'clock. You know, I hope all of our fans are, are planning on being out. It should be uh, an enthusiastic uh, environment. You know, I hope, hope, hope our, our, our fans are loud and, and, and uh, can generate a little bit of home field advantage for us uh, in, in the ball game. So uh, just going to be a, hopefully a great weekend for us. But questions about Stony Brook and the upcoming matchup? Coach Dave Thomas, ESPN Radio, Harrisonburg, JMU Sprint Broadcast Network. When you look at their offense, they are physical. They're like you. They want to run the football. But they've got 35 roughly scoring drives under three minutes, and they've got eight 40-plus yard scoring right. drives. Break down their offense, how they're physical, yet can still strike the big right. play when they want to. Well, you know, it's, it's an RPO kind of scheme where it's – a lot of their plays are designed for Carbone to make the decision whether he's going to hand the ball off or execute the passing game. And, you know, they run the ball so effectively that they really they force people into a lot of one-on-one -on -one matchups. You know, and I, I commented just a second ago, you know, they have, they have four big-time, big-play wide receivers. You know, if Bolden's out, they've still got, you know, three others. And then, then, then 86, uh, Trent filled in last week, and he's, he's, a, he's a clone of Jackson, you know, tall, uh, rangy. Uh, and, you know, all those guys, if they catch the ball, you know, in space, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, if they beat that one guy, it's, you know, it's, it's over. You know, just like, just like we saw last week against Lehigh. You know, Jackson catches the glance route off the RPO fake, and next thing you know, he's, he's in the end zone. So, you know, they have that big playability. You know, the, the pressure it's going to put on us is, you know, we've got to stop their run game. You know, those three backs are powerful runners. They're downhill runners. You know, uh, uh, I don't want to mispronounce his name. Uh, Leotine is maybe more of the physical runner. The other two are, you know, shifty, jump cut. You know, Bedell is the one that everybody knows. Uh, we we got to do a great job shutting those guys down. But at the same time, we're going to have to do a great job in the secondary of staying on top of those routes uh, and not giving up the yard after the catch, yards after the catch, you know, when we're able to execute and connect. Well, I think, you know, the size up front is, is obviously going to be a challenge. Uh, you know, the linebackers all run very well. Uh, they'll be, you know, primarily in a four-down front, but you'll see some three-down front. Uh, you know, when they're in that odd front, most of the time they're moving and, you know, bringing linebackers or, or a down safety or somebody like that on a pressure. But they're very, very aggressive. Uh, the back end reminds me a lot of our back end. You know, they're athletic. Uh, they can cover. They can play man. Uh, you know, they can tackle, they're physical tacklers, they'll be involved in the run game. But it's, just, it's a defense that's, you know, very sound, very aggressive, 
uh, and very disciplined. And so uh, we're going to have to really work and execute at a high level to move the football Saturday. Your defensive line is going to have to be a big part in stopping the run. What have those guys done this year really well, Andrew and Simeon and, and Cornell, in, in stopping the run? I know they got a lot of praise for their, their sacks and, and rushing a passer, but what have they done well in the run game? Well, I mean, it all comes down to something that sounds very cliche-ish, but, you know, they do their job. You know, if, if Simeon's supposed to occupy the A-gap, you know, he physically occupies uh, the A-gap and doesn't get knocked off the ball and he doesn't jump out of his gap. Uh, and, you know, the linebackers do a great job of fitting the run game behind them as well. But it all comes down to just them doing what they're supposed to do. You know, if, if Andrew's you know, supposed to play shuffle on the quarterback, then he doesn't go chasing the dive. You know, he, he, everybody does their job, and if they, if they do it with discipline, uh, and everybody's on the same page, then it all comes down to just making the play. And if you can make the play consistently, then you should make people, you know, people are going to have to really work to move the football. So, you know, hopefully we're able to do that. And you know, I think the challenge with them is, you know, number one, having guys in the right spot to make the play. And then with their running backs, you know, you got two that can make you miss and you got another one that will try to run you over. Uh, you know, we're going to have to do a great job with those one-on-one -on -one tackles this Saturday. David Aguzma, TV3 in Harrisonburg. You have a senior class that not only won the national championship last year, but also went one and done the previous two years. I know you talked about this yesterday in the teleconference, but how will playoff experience just be a part of what sets you apart in the playoffs? Well, I mean, I think that, you know, all those experiences are, are important. You know, they understand the pain uh, of the Liberty loss or the Colgate loss because they were there and they lived through it. And you can, and I've asked them at various times, you know, I said, you know, tell me about how that felt. You know, because I, I wanted to remember that pain because pain can be a great motivator. Uh, at the same time, they remember, you know, the playoff run last year. Uh, but, you know, for us, the key is, you know, every game we need to treat the same as we did all throughout the season. You know, the only thing that matters right now is the Stony Brook game. And our preparation is going to be consistent. Uh, you know, the, the things that are going to be important this Saturday are the thing, same things that were important at Elon. You know, we're going to have to do a great job of just of doing what we do, uh, doing the things that good football teams do, uh, and then winning those key, you know, factors that I talked about, uh, you know, early on in the press conference. But, you know, our, our kids understand that even though the intensity gets ramped up, the attention gets ramped up, the stakes are much higher, it still comes down to being the same football team that they've been for the past 12, 12 13 weeks. With the way uh – but the way Stony Brook played on special teams this past Saturday, especially, I guess, the punting game, they were able to pin Lehigh deep yeah. a couple of times. Have you guys talked about, you know, field position and the average starting field position? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, that's, you know, we talk about it each week, you know, because it's always a big factor for us. But, uh, you know, they're very, you know, you see them, they're aggressive and physical on offense. They're aggressive and physical on defense. You know, I can promise you they're going to be the same thing on special teams, and they are. Uh, and they're, you know, they do a great job in that phase. Uh, you know, they do, they do a great job, you know, just like Harry has all year for us of, you know, working. I'm sure they work it just like we do. You know, we work it every Saturday night. You, we're going to work it today, you know, trying to pin that team inside the 10. Uh, you know, obviously they do a great job with that as well. But, it, you know, it comes down to all three phases fitting together and working together. And I think that their ball club is built very similarly to our ball club. And that's, you know, that's, that's why you see all those things working together. And that field position in the playoffs is going to be critical, you know, because if you can – if you can keep people on their end of the field, obviously, you know, your chances are going to be a lot better no matter which side of the ball you're on, offense or defense. Coach, I know with the two teams being so similar, you're going to want to try to do what you do. But is there a temptation, because I know in the playbook there are things you've not shown us that look totally different than what you've done on both sides of the ball, even on special teams. Is, is there more of a temptation in a one-and-done playoff scenario when you're against a team that's similar in strength that you are to, to maybe pull some of that out and, and, and revisit at least the opportunity to use it? Well, I think there's, there's always going to be wrinkles in each ball game, And certainly there's, there's, things that we haven't shown, there's things that we haven't shown yet this year that we've worked all year. You know? uh, I'm sure they're the same way. Uh, it all comes down to you know, what fits the timing in the ball game and the situation and the scenario and – uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we're going to go out and do everything we can to win the ball game on Saturday. So, you know, everything's on the table. Can you talk a little about Stony Brook's quarterback? It's like he's playing at a pretty high level right now. No, there's not one. He's 22 touchdowns and three interceptions. I mean, I, I would call that a high level. So, uh, you know, he had, you know, he had an up and down year, you know, year before last. Uh, and I think that, you know, anytime you talk about the quarterback position, a lot of times those guys have to go through some growing pains and have to make mistakes in order to learn how to not make mistakes. 
but I think he does a good job of running that offense, you know, and, and it's a, it, you'll see them check with me, you know, they're, they're going to try to get us to jump off sides, they're going to try, try to get us to show what we're doing on defense, um, and then he's going to do a great job of checking into whatever he thinks is the best play for it, and then he does a great job executing uh, everything post-snap, so, you know, he's much like our quarterback, you know, he's a seasoned veteran, he's playing at a very, very high level, he has good players around him, uh, and, you know, his performance on Saturday and how, you know, how he handles everything, and same thing for Brian. You know, that's probably going to dictate how our offense and how their offense, uh, you know, executes on Saturday. Does it help at all that you face a CAA opponent to start off because there's a bit of familiarity no, with the I league? No, I think it's terrible. <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay. I, you know, I think they're one of the best teams on our side of the bracket, uh, and I think we are too. Uh, I, I hate that we're facing each other in the second round because, you know, either one of these two teams I think you could easily see deeper on. Uh, the one thing we are guaranteed of is one of us is going to be playing in the quarterfinals. So we'll have a CAA team in the quarterfinals. But, uh, no, I don't, I don't like seeing a conference opponent this early. But, you know, we've seen it two years in a row, so maybe that's their way of weeding us out, you know, put us against each other. But, uh, you know, you've got to play them at some point anyway. And if they're in the, if they're in the tournament, uh, you're probably going to have to play them at some point down the line anyway if they're a good team. Coach, nationally, this past weekend was rivalry week. And we saw some, some pretty good football games, but we also saw a lot of testiness, even spilled over into the professional level. Does this give you a good point of reference, knowing that, okay, we are in this stage of the season, how to conduct yourself and not to get involved in things on the field and point to some things that took place this past right. weekend? Well, it's something we talk about each week. We just can't get involved in that stuff. And so, you know, if, if the other team's trying to, to bait us or taunt us or something like that, we can't get involved in it. You know, if there's a cheap shot, you know, we can't retaliate because, you know, that selfishness right there, you know, of, of wanting to retaliate, it's human nature. But, you know, you got the teams, the, the team's goals are greater than that. And uh, I think our kids have done a decent job mostly throughout the year of, of doing that. And so, you know, hopefully we can, you know, not get involved in any of that if it does occur on Saturday. But, uh, you know, that's part of this time of the year. And, you know, the players understand the stakes, the stakes of the game and just, uh, you know, having, having, having better discipline than the other than the opponent. After what you saw in practice on Sunday and just your experience with the players coming off of bye, can you talk about the freshness of, of your yeah. team and how that helps going into this week? Yeah, I mean, I, I, and I think traditionally our teams have played very well off of buys. So uh, uh, I think that they used the time appropriately. We got the work in that we needed to get in last week. Uh, we were very sharp on Sunday, so, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of rustiness. Uh, so I would expect us to, you know, practice well throughout this week and, and I, I would expect us to play pretty well on Saturday. Coach, you're, you're, this, this year was a little different than last year as far as some of the results, as far as the, was the, the spread of the points. Right. And, and second year through, you understand better than anybody in this room about how teams game plan and how they adjust and, and fit some things right. to you. How does that make you prepared for what you're going to see Saturday in particular? Again, a strong physical team, very similar to you where this game could be one of those sluggish games where it's kind of back and forth and it's not a, it's not a blowout kind of thing. How has this season prepared this team for what you might see on Saturday? Well, I mean, I think, you know, every year is a new year and every team's a new team. And you, and you saw it last year at the end of the year. You know, when you started playing, you know, North Dakota State and Youngstown State, all of a sudden, you know, those are tight, low-scoring, close ball games. And I, I think this one this Saturday is probably going to be similar to that. You know, our team is – we've been in a lot of those this year. Uh, I don't, I mean, our guys won't panic. Uh, you know, they'll, they know how to handle themselves. They know what it's going to take to win it. Uh, they know that they're going to have to be their best in the fourth quarter. Uh, so hopefully we'll have that opportunity there late in the ball game where, you know, that experience pays off and, you know, we're able to pull it out by one or three or whatever. I know Stony Brook had lost their All-American tackle for, for the season. For them to overcome, overcome that, I mean, that, that's a significant loss. What have you seen just from the, 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 the offensive tackle that stepped in for them? And, and that offensive line kind of overall? Well, I mean, I think it speaks to their depth. You know, it's, it's much like us. You know, we lost, we've lost two starters on the offensive line this year, you know, uh, <clears throat> right guard and right tackle. Uh, but we've had guys that have stepped in and done a great job of uh, being, number one, being ready when their number was called, and then number two, going out and playing at a high level to where you don't have a dip in the, in the production of that unit. And so I think that same, same thing you saw at Stony Brook. Uh, injuries are part of it. You're going to have them each year. And the teams that can handle those injuries and overcome and excel in spite of it, uh, instead of using it as an excuse or a crutch, you know, those are the teams that are going to go out and play at a high level and win. So uh, I think it's a credit to the recruiting job 
uh, that they've done up there and the team that, uh, that they've put together. Anything else? All right, going to be an exciting Saturday afternoon, 2 o'clock, Bridgeforth Stadium. Hope to see everybody there. Go Dukes. <laughs>